Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here, okay? Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475-300-3850. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the Word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as Apostle, Teacher, and Prophet of the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475 300 Five zero twenty four hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Previously, on the Word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach telecast. Second Corinthians 4, verse 1 says, It is God himself, in his mercy, who has given us this wonderful work of telling his good news to others. And so we never give up. We do not try to trick people into believing. We are not interested in fooling anyone. We never try to get anyone to believe that the Bible teaches what it does. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And then it just says in verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great now, gain. Here's a question from Anonymous. It says, Is Satan omnipresent? That means that's supposed to be omni. Omnipresent. Now, that's a good question. That's a very good question. And the reason it's a good question, because when it comes to the enemy, a lot of people don't know about him. And that's why sometimes it's hard to fight him, because if you don't know about him, then how are you going to fight now, him? now, back to our show. Now, Genesis chapter 3 Verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Now the devil used the body of a serpent. Why? Well, number one, he needed to do a slick move here. And the way to do this slick move is to use a slick vessel. But the other reason was because when God told Adam to dress the garden, which means decorate it, and keep it, which means to protect it, that means protect it from anything that would come in the garden that shouldn't be there. 
Now, if Satan had to came in the garden as Satan, Adam would have recognized him and cast him out. So what he did, like he always do, oh coward, is he used the body of another vessel that didn't know or, or had no authority to say no. A serpent couldn't say nothing. Hmm. So he got in his body and he used it to walk up to Eve. Mind you, Adam was there with her all the time. It's not like he was somewhere else in the garden. No, he was with his wife. And he was wrong for letting this serpent come up and challenge his wife. He was wrong for that. So brothers, if you're blessed to be married and God has given you a flower, please protect her. God, please protect her. Protect her. Pray for her. Pray over her so that she don't listen to these strange voices of people that are jealous or envious or that that are jealous because of what she has with you let's go back to verse 1 chapter 3 of genesis i'm gonna read it again now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So here he is questioning her to challenge her to see what she knew. Now, he was very slick and clever. This was a clever move. How? Because, number one, he know that God gave instructions to Adam because Adam had headship. And Adam was made before Eve. Some people didn't know that. If you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. No, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his he didn't say there he said breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So in the middle of the garden, there were two trees. Now, if you jump down again to verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him, not them, him, into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet, which means suitable helper for him. So Eve wasn't made yet. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called everything, or every living creature, excuse me, that was the name thereof. Adam had headship. Eve wasn't there. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. 
the scripture says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. See, he wasn't made when God gave Adam instruction about the garden. He wasn't there when Adam gave names to everything because God told him, you do it. And whatever you call it, that's what they'll be. The enemy knew how to mess things up. He said to Eve, did God say? Now he's, he, there's so much in this, but this is not uh, a time for, uh, well, we're having Bible study. All right, as the Lord said, okay. He just said, go ahead, all right. Thank you, Lord. The enemy, you, he challenged Adam's authority by questioning Adam's wife about the condition and the instructions given concerning the garden. He said, did God say? Now that would cause doubt because the enemy knew that Adam is the one that gave Eve the Torah of the garden because when God brought her to him, God wasn't the one that told her about the garden. He left that to Adam. Why? Because God is a God of order. Brothers, listen. God bless you to be married. Man, feed your wife. Spiritually, feed her. Feed her. Share the word with her. Study with her. See, it takes a man or a woman being single to be able to step back and look at the covenant and go, you know what? All right, when the Lord bless me, this is how it's supposed to be. Fellowship. Sometimes you can sit on the couch with your spouse and cuddle and have a Bible. And y'all take turn reading scripture. Just while you're reading, brother, she's looking through the scripture and finding something and sharing that. And sister, while you're sharing that, he's looking through finding something. And then the husband should be more advanced than the wife in the things of God so he can carry her, so he can feed her. Why? Because he's the head of the house and the priest of the home. Now, if the wife is the one leading Bible study, leading prayer, explaining to the husband, well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that, that's out of order. That's totally out of order. No, no woman of God, strong in the Lord and in the Holy Ghost and in the Word, should marry a man that is not established in the Lord. Mm-mm. Because it won't work. And no man should marry a woman that's not established in the Lord and in the Holy Ghost. Because it won't work. Now, if she is ministry minded, if you see, brother, that God has a calling on her life and she already mentioned in the Lord and she have a little bit of relationship with him, Praise God, there's an open door and there's, there's, there's a, a, a powerful potential there. Same thing with you, sisters. If the man is the man of God, or is he, if he's growing in the Lord, and you're already in ministry, if you give God some time, he will, if you see that this brother got potential, this brother, there's an anointing on him that is exceptional and that's going to surpass where I am, then that's all right. But if it's a brother that don't want to read the Bible, he don't he get mad because you're praying and spending time with God and, and talking about the Lord. No, that's that you might as well he might as well kick rocks. Give him the boot. And brother, if you are uh, 
married to or interested in or even pursuing a woman who does not love the Lord and don't want to hear nothing about the Lord. She don't acknowledge the anointing on your life. She rather hang with the unsaved, live with the unsaved, walk with the unsaved, talk like the unsaved. It's not going to work, brother. It's not going to work. You might as well let her go. She could have a powerful anointing in her, but if she's not, if she hasn't chosen or answer the call that God has given her. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. The enemy challenged Eve by what she didn't know. Now she knew it because her husband told her. But it wasn't God that told her. So when he asked her, Yea, hath God said, this is Genesis 3 verse 1, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Her answer in verse 2 was this, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree, of the trees of the garden. That's true. But of the tree of the knowledge, well, excuse me, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest, which means or, ye die. It's not what God said. Let's compare. Chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Let's look at Genesis 3, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. That's true. Okay. Now let's look back at verse 17 of chapter 2. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This is what God said. So now in chapter 3, verse 3, Eve said, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, or you'll die. Now she added to the word right here, and she took from the word right here. She added to it when she said, ye shall, uh, neither shall ye touch it. And then she took from it when she said, lest ye die. God said, thou shalt surely die. But she said less, meaning or. And the enemy came back with this response. And the servant said unto the woman, this is chapter 3, verse 4, Ye shall not surely die. Now he told a lie, but it was a half true right there. How? Here's how. Because he was talking about you shall not physically die. Because, see, the devil is not concerned about nothing spiritual. His whole mission is a threefold mission to steal this John chapter 10. John 10 and 10. To steal and to kill and to destroy. That's his mission. And the tools that he used, the methodology, the strategy, is in first john let me go back there first john chapter 2 verse 16 but let's go to verse 15 again Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because the devil is the God of this world. Write down 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, because that's what it tells you. The devil is the God of this world. He runs this world. That's why it's so crooked. That's why so many problems. That's why the whole world lieth in wickedness and the whole shebang. So God said, don't love the world nor the things in it. Don't. 
And then in verse 16, the Lord told the apostle John to write, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, to reach under me trying to get this book gotta have resources now the enemy he tricked sister Eve by using those three methods of trickery here's what he did when the woman saw that the tree was good for food that was the lust of the flesh when the woman saw that it was pleasant to the eyes, that was the lust of the eyes. And when she saw it was a tree to make one wise, that was the pride of life. Where did you see that, brother? Well, in Genesis 3, again, when, she, when he said to her, you shall not surely die, chapter 3, verse 4, then verse 5, he said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that was the lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, that was the lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. That was the pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. He was right there. A weak man. No backbone. He was right there. And that wasn't right. Because he was responsible for her. Very responsible. As a matter of fact, when God handed down the curse, when he handed down judgment in chapter 3, here's what God said. He had to let the woman know something. In verse 16 of chapter 3, And unto the woman he said, this is God saying, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Now the Lord uses me to teach this in the theology class, and I had to be used by the Lord to throw this in there. He shall rule over you. Rule don't mean sit down, shut up, and do what I say. That's not what that means. God said he will be responsible for you. He shall govern you. If your eyebrow wrinkles, he's going to be right there to say, honey, what's wrong? If anything, if the enemy is trying to attack you, woman of God, your husband, the man of God, is supposed to stand between you and the enemy. To let nothing happen to you. He shall govern you, saith the Lord. He loved women so much that he said you need someone to protect you. From spiritual things and of course natural things. But there's a lot of men especially those in the world that's not born again, that's not saved, they might be good with hands and feet and being able to fight physically, but when the enemy attacks the household or the wife spiritually, if that man is not in Christ, psh, honey, you made the wrong decision and God did not put you all together. So again, the question, 
is the devil omnipresent? The answer, no. He's not omni anything. Not at all. He's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent. And he's not omniscient. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. He has demons that do his bidding, that go out and find out stuff and come back to him and give reports. If he do go out and he's in one spot again, now he can travel as the speed of light because angels, they travel faster than that, faster than... An angel could be here in Connecticut and be in California in 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 un indescribable time because angels travel faster than the speed of light. Some of you understand that, those of you with spiritual gifts, the gift of discernment, and you know it, and the gift of discernment, and you don't know it. You just know that there's something special about you. You know that you could be sitting there and see something go real fast out of your peripheral vision and you look and you don't see nothing. If it's a small black shadow, that's a demon. But if it's not, now angels are not going to operate so much that way. They operate different than the way demons do. But a demon will run right by you. You have to look. <laughs> So, uh, again, from anonymous, there's the answer to your question. No, Satan is not omnipresent. Okay, next question. Why should we worry about doing what's right if we all are going to heaven? Isn't hell just for the devil? And this is by L. E, May 24th, 2021. Good question. Why should we worry about doing what's right if we are all going to heaven? Now, I have a question on top of that. Who said we were all going to heaven? Now, she or, or he or she, just L-E, also asked, isn't hell just for the devil? Let's start with that. The answer is no. What? Why not? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 25. And some of y'all might be saying, wow, they don't do that at the ministry I go to. That's because a lot of ministers really don't study. They're so busy telling you that God's middle name is Santa Claus and that God give you all kind of gifts and presents and monies and the more you give, the more you'll be blessed and if you give your life savings and, pay, and give the rent and the light bill and the gas bill and you sit in the dark, then God will bless you for that and that's so wrong. Bible study should be important and everyone's not a teacher. I know some of y'all leaders Y'all call them y'all leaders. Your leader should be Jesus Christ. But some of y'all call your leader leader. <laughs> some of y'all call the person who's over the ministry you go to. That's my leader. That's And when people call me the apostle, I tell them I'm not your apostle. I'm your brother. I'm your brother. Don't I don't claim ownership. And some of you might wonder, what well, I mean you don't got churches under you? Let me answer a question that's not in here yet. I guess. The church is not a building. The church is the invisible body of Jesus Christ made up of everyone that has accepted Jesus Christ. When you are in the fivefold ministry, you are assigned to the body of Christ everywhere. Meaning if I go to China, I'm the apostle. I'm an apostle there. If I go to Japan, I'm an apostle there. No, it don't matter where I go. Because I am sent to the body of Christ. 
If you're an evangelist, you're sent to the body of Christ. If you're a prophet or a prophetess, you're sent to the body of Christ. If you're a pastor, which is the same thing as bishop, which is the same thing as bishop. I stopped because I was going to say how bishop is has to be, you know, is a man. Scripture tells you that. And pastor is the same thing. So that tells you that there are no women pastors. But I, I wasn't going to go there. So I paused to see what the Lord wanted me to say to just go bypass that and keep going or stop and throw that nugget. And so it's out now. It's out the bag. So, you know, there's no such thing as women pastors. So if you are a pastor, which is the same thing as bishop, that you are assigned and sent to the body of Christ. And again, if you're an evangelist, that's male or female, that you are assigned to the body of Christ. If you're a prophetess, which is a female, you're assigned to the body of Christ. If you're a prophet, which is a man, then you're assigned to the body of Christ. If you are a teacher, which is male or female, you are assigned to the body of Christ. If you say, I belong to that building, then you have limited your territory. You have confined yourself. So there's people that, that assume that the person over their ministry, over the ministry they go to is their leader. And they shouldn't be. And no, no minister should allow anyone to put them on that type of a pedestal. Because that means you're taking God's glory. And as soon as you lead that person into a ditch, God's going to deal with you. Back to the question. Let's go backwards on it. Isn't hell just for the devil? Matthew chapter 25. Here's what Jesus said. And the words are in red if you got a King James Version. Let's go to verse. Thirty-one. Now we're going to verse 41, but let's start at 31 so we don't walk in the middle of a conversation. And I'm in the King James Version. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations my eyelashes, that's what it is. My eyelashes are too long. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That means the Christians, those that are saved and born again, you are predestined. You were predestined. God already chose you. So when you say, I gave my life to the Lord. No, you didn't. God already chose you. Thank you, Lord. And all you did was say yes. Verse 35. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger. And ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him. Saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger? and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink. When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, 
ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, the goats, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the answer to that question, the last part of it, isn't hell just for the devil? No, it's for those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as well. In the book of Revelation, chapter Let's see, chapter, okay, chapter 21, verse 6, John said, let me go back, let me start at verse 1, this was John wrote, something he saw, this was a vision, a new heaven and a new earth, Revelation 21, verse 1, he said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So what Jehovah Witness say, you can live forever in paradise on earth. They're lying to you. Don't even believe that. They're going to hell anyway. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne this was the Lord, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. I'm not cutting my eyelashes. I can't do that. And he said unto me, It is done, verse 6, Revelation 21. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That means he is the beginning and the end and all in between. He is who he is. I will give unto them that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. He didn't say daughter. Let me throw this nugget out there. Because in heaven, there's only one type of body, and that's a celestial body. Not, not anything with gender. Everyone in heaven is going to be God's spiritual son while he is the father. The female gender was made for the earth realm to reproduce and to be a help me unto man. Now, does that mean women are not going to be in heaven? No, that's not what that means. That means that in heaven, sisters, you will be God's spiritual son. <laughs> you got to read the scripture where they ask Jesus, if a woman married to a man and he dies and she marries his brother and all of this, he went on and asked a few other things. He said, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? And Jesus said, in the resurrection, they don't marry, nor are they given in marriage. That doesn't go on. Because we, our bodies will be like the angels will be. And there's no gender. That's genderless. Just celestial. We'll talk about that another time. Verse 7, let me read that again. Revelation 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving 
And the abominable, now homosexual, homosexuality is not the only abomination. There's all, lying is an abomination. Causing division is an abomination. Uh, write this down, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Read that and it'll tell you that there's six things God hates, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. All right, so read that. Verse 8 again, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers. Now, some people don't know what a whoremonger is. In scripture, a woman that was a prostitute was a harlot, but a male prostitute is called a whoremonger. Look it up in the Greek. And sorcerers. Now, sorcerers here are talking about those that's dealing with pharmacies. You know, spells and potions and, and stuff. <laughs> it's just something. That you go into the Greek on this, you'll find some things that'll blow you away. Sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, there's probably some people saying, oh, well, that means that they'll be in hell. Oh, no, no. Let me tell you why. The devil that deceived them. Here it is. Revelation chapter 20. And I'm going to read verse, start of verse 10. Scripture, John wrote, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast, that's the Antichrist, and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, I'm going to share this with you. As long as the believers live in heaven with God, which is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever the unsaved... <laughs> are going to burn in the lake of fire for that long, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And the Lord used me to do a sermon. He gave me a sermon that's called this. You will live forever when you leave this world because the soul never dies. So you will live forever. When y'all go to funerals and you see the body laying there, oh no, the body is there because that's the shell. The breath went back to God. That's the spirit. But the soul went wherever that person lived to go. If they were unsaved, then they're in hell. Period. Simple as that. Being tormented day and night. But if they left this world and they're in heaven because they were born again, then they're resting before God. That's Hebrews chapter 4. We'll talk about that another time too. But the beast and the false prophet and the devil are thrown into the lake of fire and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. In verse 11 of Revelation 20, John said, And I saw a great white throne. Now this is the second throne Jesus got to sit on. The first one is going to be in heaven, and it's called a beam of judgment seat, where the rewards are going to be given out for those that were part of the rapture. Because when the Lord come back and get the church, and bring the body of Christ to heaven. In the earth realm, the tribulation is going to be going on. So those unlearned ministers that are saying, well, right now we're living in tribulation time. No, you're not. Not at all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because during the tribulation, the church, the body of Christ is going to be gone. In heaven, receiving their reward and having the wedding feast. But in the earth realm, the devil and his demons are going to be going ballistic. But here, he's going to sit on another throne, and it's called the Great White Judgment Throne. This is where all the unsaved are going to stand before him and be judged according to what they've done. There's going to be four books open. The fourth one being the book of life. All right. 
we're going to talk about that another time too because I know I, oh I never heard that I know the Lord knows because a lot of leaders that should be teaching and preparing you for heaven are busy trying to get your stuff and not teach you that because they don't know a lot of them don't know it anyway there's a lot that do and they are teaching but there's more that don't than those that do and those that don't are teaching all kind of lies and forming all kind of cliques and theologies and stuff and again I told you gotta watch out for the new world Christians the ones that are talking about Christian rappers and even mimes you gotta watch out for all of them because that's not holy mm -mm. you can you can praise dance or worship dance for the Lord yes but there's listen if a person is born again and God gives them the spirit of worship through dance that's one thing but a person that's that's not born again, they just into that because they consider that as their righteousness. That that's not biblical. Because you can't look like the world and you talking about you worshiping God. It don't go that way. That's a lie. It don't go that way. You need to go sit down. And cursed be the leader that got you doing that mess and you ain't born again. You're not born again. Cursed be that leader in that ministry. In Jesus' name. John says, verse 11, Revelation 20, And I saw a great white throne, that's a great white judgment throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, these are the unsaved, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they would judge every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death so again the question that L E asked isn't hell just for the devil? No, it's for the unsaved. But hell is a holding place for souls. The final sentence is a lake of fire. So all those that leave this world, they die and go to hell, they are going to be given up out of hell, according to scripture right here, Revelation chapter 20, and they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And death and hell are going to be thrown into the lake of fire also. Now, L.E. also wrote, why should we worry about doing what's right if we all are going to heaven? Well, now let's handle that. We're not all. Well, everybody's not going to heaven when they die. They're not. Mm -mm. They're not. But what do you mean they're not? Who are you to say? I'm not. I'm not. No one to say nothing. I'm just telling you what's written. I'm going to get the scripture for you to share something with you. Praise the Lord. Turn to Matthew. Chapter 7. And let's notice verse 13. 
And this is what Jesus said. If you have a King James or any other Bible and the letters are written in red, then that means that's the Lord talking himself. Let's notice verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. That means that's what the Old Testament commands. Verse 13, Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go therein, or thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So he just said it. There's going to be more people going to hell than those that are going to be in heaven. Because the road to hell, the road to destruction is wide. You just heard the eight classes of people that are not going to be in heaven. Let's read it again. Revelation chapter, is it 20 or 21? Verse 8, John was used by the Holy Ghost to write this, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, abominable excuse me, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, notice the part where it says, but the fearful, those are people that are scared to follow Jesus. You know, they're scared. They want to, you know, uh, um, they don't want anybody to know that this is how they, they scared to let other people go. they scared to break away from unsaved family and friends. they scared to do all of that. they scared to deny themselves or to, to carry their cross for Jesus Christ. they scared. Because they, they feel they'll be losing something. They don't want to be talked about. They don't want to be put down. They don't want to be talked about again, said. They don't want to go through that because they're fearful. If I follow Jesus, if I give my life to the Lord, man, I ain't going to have no fun. I'm not going to be able to do this or that. People are going to talk about me in the family. They're going to laugh at me the same way I have laughed at Christians. They're going to laugh at me. and Oh, no, I, I can't do this. I don't want to be with that man of God because that man of God loves God, but I'm not there. And I don't want to. I'm, I'm too scared to enter into covenant with him because if I enter into covenant with him, then I might mess it up. Or a man of God might say, man, she's really a woman of God. I, I, I better back away from her because if I get with her and it, she's going to want to be married, she's going to want to do things God's way. And I don't, I don't want to do it God's way. I just want to do what I want to do. I want to have my cake and eat it too. That's the fearful. And then the unbelieving is those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I give my life to the Lord. Uh, I'm just not ready yet. Suppose you die tonight, thou fool. I don't want to give my life to the Lord right now. I really don't because I don't want to be a hypocrite. First, I want to get myself together. Jesus says, in John chapter 15, let's notice verse 1. Jesus said this. I didn't say none of this. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, 
that it may bring forth more fruit. Then he said to the disciples, Now you are clean. You, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, I just, I just dropped something on y'all and I washed you on the inside with the word. If you follow me, you'll bear much fruit. But if you don't follow me, then you're going to, you're not going to end up anywhere. You, you just won't. You, you won't. But if you do follow me, the Father will clean you and bless you to do more for the kingdom. And then he said in verse 4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He's telling what the parable means now. He that abideth in me, and I in him. That means if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship. He that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. And all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table.
Satisfied. 